Okay, in this third video we're going to take a look at some other controls and we're going to have a go at building a really simple calculator application. I've already created a new form. You'll notice that I've changed the property of the form and I've given the form the name calculator. So to do this I've just clicked on the form and I've gone down to the text property and chosen calculator. The next thing I'm going to do is add some additional controls. So for this I'm going to add I've got a couple of text boxes and this is going to allow the user to put their input into. I'm going to need a button and the button's going to run an event which is going to add these two text boxes together and finally I'm going to need a text box for the result. So I can arrange the form however I want. It might be nice to have the add button whoops, in between. I just double clicked on that by accident there so you can see I moved into the code but I'll just move back here, drag that down and I'm going to have my button just in the middle there. I'm going to have my button a little bit smaller so it can have a symbol put inside and hopefully we'll have something that tells me the result down here. So I'm going to change a few of the properties. The first text box I'm just going to go into and I'm just going to give it a more meaningful name. So I'm just going to call that TXT for text box and I'm just going to say input 1 and this one I'm going to do the same. I'm going to call it TXT input 2 my button, I'm going to give it a better name, I'm going to call it btn add and I'm also going to change the text property of the button into a plus, to be a bit more useful so the user knows what's going on and this uh, text box at the bottom I'm going to give the name txt result and that's where the result's going to go. I'm also going to make use of a label here so if I just drag the label on just going to change the text of the label and I'm just going to put an equals in there so the user knows that that's going to have the result in down at the bottom. Okay, so I've got them all nicely aligned. I'm not going to go and change the name property of the label because I'm not going to access that in the code so it's quite okay just to leave that as it is. I'm just going to shrink the form down a little bit. I could do a little bit more tidying up and I could align all this but for the moment I'm happy with that. So I'm going to go to the plus button here and I'm going to add an event like we looked at before and I'm going to make myself a function that's going to be called add. Put add in there, press enter and we're going to jump into the code that's behind. So here you can see it's already created now um, a function that we can use to add those two text boxes together. So the first thing that we need to do is we need to look at how we get the text out of those text boxes. So first thing to look at is we can access all of those text boxes in the code here. So they're all the names that we chose. So I'm just going to go text input one dot text. And you can see that what that would do, I could either put text in, so I could either assign some text. So in that case, you could see that the word hello would be stored in the text box. But what I want to do is I want to get something out of the text box. So I'm going to do things either all the way around. I'm going to start off by just declaring myself a simple variable that's going to store the first item. Now I really want it to be an integer that comes out to be able to add it together. So that's okay. So I'm going to say int import oops, input one equals and I've got my text box one dot text. Now this is not going to work at the moment because as you know from last year we can't take a text box and put it into an integer. That's just not going to work. So we're going to need to do something with that. But we'll address that in a minute. But let's make the other variables first. So we're going to have input 2 and that's going to be uh, text input 2. I'm going to get the text out of that by accessing its property. And then finally I'm going to need the result. So I'm just going to have an int and I'm going to call it result. And I'm going to say the result is going to be input 1 and I'm going to add that onto input 2. So hopefully I'll get the text from the input box 1, store it, text from input box 2, store it, and finally I'm going to store both of those things into a result. The only thing I need to do is now write that back into my text box that stores the result. So text result, and I'm going to say dot text, and I'm going to do another assignment statement back, and I'm going to say result. Now obviously here we've got several issues. 
at the moment we've got two fields that are giving us text back trying to go into an integer and here we've got an integer and we're trying to assign it to a piece of text so obviously these things aren't going to work so what I'm going to do here is use a command that we used quite a bit last year I'm just going to use the int.pass command and what I'm going to do is say pass whatever comes out of that text box now we know this isn't good coding because there could be uh, text in there and this is going to fail but just for this video we're just going to keep it very simple and say we're going to pass those two text boxes and store them in those integers and of course here we've got an integer we want it to be a string so the easiest thing is just to call its to string uh, method there and you can see that that's going to store it back into the result now if I just save We'll just run that and make sure we haven't got any errors. Okay, that seems to have worked fine. So if we bring this back on, we can put in the number in the first box, the number in the second, press our add button, and we can see there that that's worked and they've been added together. Obviously, as I said before, because we've used that int.pass, if we were to put some characters in that and then run that, we're going to generate an exception because you can see here the input string was not in the correct format. There are several ways we might go about sort of changing that. We could put a simple if statement in at the top here that checks to make sure it is a number value or we could even use the try pass uh, method which we looked at last year but for now we'll just leave things as they are. The other thing you might want to do if we hadn't have wanted to write this to a text box we could have written it maybe to a message box so I'm just going to stop that running for a second it wouldn't have been very much more difficult to do that I could have just put a message box in there and in the same way as I assigned the result to this text box here I could have done the same thing here I could have just told the message box to write that out to the screen and if I run that now again put a couple of numbers in press plus you can see here that not only did it update the box at the bottom but it also gave me a message box with the number 5 in